I welcome all who have gathered here this afternoon as we have gathered to, in the presence of God, we thank God uh, for the long life of Mr. Wally Arnold. And on behalf of Mountjoy Presbyterian Church, I extend our prayerful sympathy uh, to you, uh, Wally's family, and his friends on the sad passing and the sudden passing of uh, Wally. We have gathered here to surround you with our love and prayers, and we know that the Lord is with us uh, to help us in our time of loss. The psalmist says that God is our refuge and strength and never present help in times of trouble. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. So we gather here with those words from Scripture to worship God. We stand to sing our opening hymn, There is a green hill far away. That brings us to Calvary to remember, to remember Christ's dying love. So we stand as the music leads us and we sing There is a green hill far away. Jesus be our only hope for life 
and for death. We thank you that in Jesus we are never separated from your love because nothing, nothing or no one can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Not even death or sickness. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And may your Holy Spirit be with us and give us a sense of your peace and your calm today. Even in the midst of the loss that we feel following the death of the one we have known and loved for so long. And his sudden part, departure from this earth. So be with us. And Father we remember that though weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So we look to Jesus and we look to that cross knowing that there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin and only Jesus could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in. And so as we read your word and as we hear your word preached today, we pray that your word would speak into all our hearts. So come by your Holy Spirit and speak into all our lives, we pray today. And as we join together in prayer, we say those words that Jesus taught us and so we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We turn now to read from God's Word and have three Bible passages to read this afternoon. We first of all read from Psalm 130. This is God's Word. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and his word, in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. And then some words from Lamentations chapter 3. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, <coughs> The Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. Then some words from Jesus himself recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 3. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be plainly seen that what he has done has been done through God. Amen. We thank God for these readings from his word today. <clears throat> we 
We have gathered here this afternoon in Mountjoy Presbyterian Church to thank God for the life of Mr. Wally Arnold. Wally was born here in Mountjoy nearly 82 years ago. He grew up with his brothers, the late Robbie, John and David. And today we offer you our sympathies. And to Ruby, and to Ina, and to Robbie's wife, Eileen, uh, on the loss of your brother-in-law, we surround you with our love and prayers. You had a good brother and a good brother-in-law, but likewise, Wally had a good, two good brothers, three good brothers, and three good sister-in-laws who looked after him and were there for him and supported him. As you know, Wally lived a simple life and kept himself to himself. He was a quiet and a private man. Wally began his working life as a lorry driver for Hudson and Bleakley in Herbert's town. And many a times I visited him, he recounted driving that van and through the, the bad waters of about 1950, I think it was, uh, through Glen Sheen with the snow up on every side of him. And uh, uh, he loved to recount uh, the stories of being out on the road. And then he secured employment as a library dri uh, van driver, a position that he would enjoy and keep for about 36 years until he retired. Outside of work, John liked fishing and allowed, loved travelling around uh, and staying uh, different parts with his partner Pat Deveni. Wally and Pat were together for over 50 years until sadly Pat died about 10 years ago. And we know that Pat's family are here today. Such was the bond between Wally and uh, Pat that we offer you our support and our prayers today. I think it is true to say that Wally was never the same after Pat uh, died. Uh, he was heartbroken. Uh, he had lost his soulmate. They went everywhere together. They did everything together. On Tuesday evening, John's final word, or Wally's final words, some of his final words at least, were about Pat. When I was with him on Tuesday, he had a lovely, there was a lovely picture in the palliative care ward of Wally and Pat, and I brought it over to him, and we talked about Pat and that he was going to see her again. And his final words, I think, on uh, Wednesday were about Pat. Such were the, his love, and they were, uh, we trust that they're together again. Over the past 10 years, Wally suffered at various times from ill health, and I think if truth be told, he was like that proverbial cat with nine lives. <laughs> Every time we would get a call to go to Alton and Galvin or the Swall, and if it wasn't a hip, it was a heart, or it was feet, or there was always something, and he always managed to survive. And I think one of the... Uh, the last of big occasions when he had a hip replaced, even though he didn't have a hip to replace, I think. <laughs> and he showed me the hip that wasn't there. Uh, but he survived. But he couldn't come home at that stage and he moved to Hellcrest. And I thought that's where Wally would end his days. But he was determined. He was going to get back to Mount Joy at number five, Balloon Terrace. And I thought this man is only dreaming. He'll never make it back. We, I'm sure, the family thought, he'll never make it home. But day by day on that Zimmer freight, <laughs> week by week, month by month, year by year, slow and deterred, Wally made it back up home against all odds. And the next day, where was he? Out in the red course. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he'd only one eye. <laughs> And where was he going? Little. <laughs> Wally was annoyed when Little closed down for renovations. <laughs> where was he going to go now? On the third, he decided he would go to Ask. <laughs> Wally wasn't going to park somewhere far away. <clears throat> Wally parked the red horse at the door of Ask for the shop and trolley sack. Made his way in and out. Such was his determination. A man of determination 
and uh, a man who just got on with it. And a man who kept you all right, or who kept him right. Uh, that's open to debate, isn't it? Maybe a bit of both. <laughs> He was a man who knew his own mind and knew what he wanted it and when he wanted it <laughs> and kept you all on your toes. Wally recovered from many an illness and he was back home before COVID and was cared for and uh, uh, I enjoyed my visits and I know Cheryl, our pastoral worker, has supported him and before that Sylvia Pollock and his, uh, the church elder. I was with Willie a few times in Swat, the SWA since he went in on Boxing Day. And then on Monday he was moved to the Palliative Care Ward. And I didn't get settled in on Monday and I went to see him on Tuesday. And he died on Wednesday very quickly and very suddenly. We didn't see it coming so quickly and I think it took the staff by surprise. And we thank uh, Nurse Thelma Graham and the staff at the Palliative Care Ward for the love and care that they showed to uh, Wally and his family. On, on Tuesday evening at about a half past four when I was with Wally and he was frail but he could communicate, I read one verse for him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should never perish but have everlasting life. And I said to Willie, do you know that God loves you? Yes, I do. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus? Yes, I do. Do you know that you will not perish after death and that you will go to be with the Lord? He said, yes, I do. So may that give you comfort today to his family, that he said he knew the love of the Lord, that he'd asked the Lord to take away his sin, and he said to me, I said, what about hymns for funerals? And that's why we sang that first one. Because he said, in the words of that hymn, there was no other good enough to lock the gates of heaven and let him in. And so he was trusting in Jesus. And then he said, my other funeral hymn will be abide with me. And so we trust that Willie was prepared for death when he came like we all need to, because it can come suddenly. And so, John 3.16 is a simple verse. We know it, and Wally knew it. And so today we want to just look at a few, take a few moments to think of, about this verse. It begins with, for God so loved the world. God takes the initiative, he took the initiative in loving this world. God loves us. The shortest verse in the Bible is God is love. God is a God of love and he loves us. If only we could grasp that. Maybe we're loved by brothers and sisters and mother and father and grandparents. And uh, well, they knew the love of family. They knew the love of his partner, Pat, and they knew the love of neighbours and friends. But today we want to remember that God loves us. For God so loved the world, and that's you and that's me. God loves you. And that's the way it should be His little children's heaven. God loves you and then He is the God who gives. If you love someone, you will want to give them things. Isn't that why we give presents at Christmas and presents to our family? And we, we do things for people because we love them. And God did something for us. He gave His one and only Son. Because we were sinners. And we needed someone to die for us to take away our sin. And Jesus died for us. And he went to the cross for us. Because God loves us. And he didn't want heaven, us to miss out on heaven. And to know his grace and his forgiveness. And to know his mercy. And so God gave his one and only son. He didn't have to give his one and only son. But he chose to give his one and only son. Because he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. And whoever, that's all of us, whoever, it isn't just for some people, it's for everyone. Whoever, for anyone who believes. And Wally told me that he believed. It's inclusive. There's no one left out. 
But we have to believe. Believe in our head and believe in our hearts. We can believe many things. I didn't believe that Wally would be back home again. But he was. And he got there. We have to believe in our heart <coughs> that Jesus died for us. And you can only do that for yourself. You can't do it for anyone else. And whoever believes in him will not perish. So when we go to lay Wally in a grave over here, he will not perish there. Because he said he believes. And what will he do? There is eternal life. And that life doesn't begin when we die. It begins the moment we believe. When we believe in Jesus, we can know that life here and now. John 3, 16, a great verse for us today. For God so loved each one of us that he gave his son, the Lord Jesus. And when we believe in that, that Jesus died for us, then we can enjoy eternal life life with purpose and meaning here and now. And so may God grant to each one of us today the courage to believe in God's Son, the Lord Jesus, who died for us to take away our sin. And may we be amazed by this God who loves us, the Son of God who died for us, and may we trust in him. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we gather today with our memories of Willie, whether it is him at home, with his parents or with his brothers, whether it is time with, that he shared with Pat, or whether it was at the riverbank fishing, or whether it was out in the van with the library, or whether it was in hospital, or we met him in Little or Asta, wherever. Father, we, we remember those happy times and we treasure the memories of a dear brother, brother-in-law and uncle to so many nieces and nephews. We pray for John and Enoch, David and Ruby and Eileen and their families. May they know your peace and your presence. Remembering the words of Jesus, he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. And so, in the midst of all the problems that we face in life, may we know that God loves each one of us. And he wants us to be in heaven. But there's only one way to get there, and that is through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And so may you help us today to believe that Jesus died for each one of us. May we believe that in our hearts. And then we have nothing to fear when death comes. Because we will not perish, but have everlasting life. So Lord, in the days that come, keep this family in your care and in your grace. And now as we sing our final hymn and then go to the committal and then to the hall for tea, may you go with us and help us. And may we know your grace. Amen. We stand to sing Willie's second choice of hymn today. And he said, Abide with me. So let's stand as we sing to God's prayer.
here today, and after the committal, everyone is invited uh, down to the minor hall, uh, where tea and refreshments are provided. There'll be an opportunity to sympathise uh, with the family. But now, as we go to take Mr. Wally Arnold on his final earthly journey, may we all know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 